In this video, I'm going to be showing you my current coding setup here in my new apartment. The first part of the video will talk about the hardware that I use, so my keyboard, my computer, monitor, that kind of stuff. And I also just got a new keyboard, which is this one, the Keychron Q3. So I thought it would be fun to unbox this during this video, so we'll be doing that, so that's exciting. Then, in the second part of the video, we're going to be talking about the software that I use in my coding. So for example, the IDE that I use and any other tools they actually use on my computer. First of all, the main driver of the system is this computer. It is the M1 Max MacBook Pro, which cost me a ridiculous amount of money, like 4,000 something dollars. It is absolutely overkill for coding purposes. How I got this computer is sort of a long story. I actually had to go all the way to France to get the computer. For an explanation, you can watch this video. But essentially, most of the reason why I got this super expensive high-end, pretty much the most high-end laptop that exists right now in the world, is for my video editing purposes. That is mainly why I need the extra power. But obviously for coding, and for everything else it's still a ridiculously amazing computer so that's why i use but to be clear you don't need this kind of power for coding purposes specifically the computer i would recommend if you're specifically looking for a coding laptop is what i had previous to this which is the m1 macbook air the base model is completely fine it runs for around a thousand dollars or something like that but the one thing that is really nice for coding about this computer is the extra screen real estate it is a 16 inch macbook and oh boy that there is just so much more space in the screen you can do so much more when you have that much more space in the screen uh, so that is the one thing that is really nice about this laptop for coding specifically alongside it i use this it's a 1440p monitor i don't even know which model it is it really doesn't matter it's just a the most basic 1440p monitor that you can get i am going to be upgrading it at some point i'm probably going to get the apple studio display which i know i know many people say it's super overrated and stuff but it is from what i can see the best monitor that you can get if you're using a Mac so that's probably what I'm going to be upgrading into and having two monitors is super nice and because my laptop display is so high quality and because it's so big I'm happy to use that as my second monitor instead of having two full separate monitors so throughout this video you're going to be seeing a lot of very expensive equipment so you might be wondering how I can even afford all this equipment and the answer is that for a long time I've taken my personal finances seriously and I've always looked for the most promising places to put my money to make it grow and recently one of the most promising opportunities is not stocks or bonds but actually art investing and the only platform where you can get involved with art investing as a retail investor is today's video sponsor masterworks you probably didn't know this but as an investment art has recently beat the s&p 500 by 164 percent from 1995 to 2021 through masterworks you can invest in a portion of many exclusive pieces of art and their three successful art sales so far have yielded a 30 percent net annualized return per work which is of course no guarantee of future performance but nevertheless compared to how the stock market has been doing recently this seems pretty promising getting started with masterworks is super easy it just takes a few clicks you visit their website create an account browse their artwork and you can start diversifying your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around you can get priority access by clicking my link down below in the description so go check it out thanks to masterworks for sponsoring this video but do remember that i am not your financial advisor and you should always do your own research i have this laptop stand which yeah i was too lazy to check the names of all of these things but it's going to be on the screen here it's the one that you can order from the apple website nothing too special about it it just holds my laptop so that my laptop screen and my external monitor are sort of on the same height and it also helps for airflow even though there's really no issues with the heating with this super insanely powerful laptop anyway but yeah it helps with that as well as my mouse i haven't changed anything from my previous setup video it's the mx smart the 2s i believe the same productivity mouse that you probably see in every single desk setup video ever it's so ergonomic it fits in your hand so perfectly and you have this scroll wheel right here which is really useful especially when i'm editing videos or like scrolling on the timeline and so yeah an amazing mouse not much to say about that on my desk over here you might be wondering why i have two phones well why not uh, and for my phones i have a charging stand right here which also can act as a speaker i don't really use the speaker capability of it at all but it's there that's that for my keyboard up until now i've been using 
This one is the Keychron K82. I can't remember. It's going to be up here. I was finding the format of this keyboard being relatively small like this. But then at some point I started feeling like I might actually want a bigger one. So that is why I actually thought I might want to upgrade. And it just so happens that Keychron were nice enough to send their newest, I don't know if this is their newest version, but the Q3, which is the one I was looking at anyway. This is not sponsored by them or anything. This video is sponsored by Masterworks, but they did send it to me. Okay, it is unboxing time then. Well, so it's the Keychron Q3. I absolutely love Keychron's keyboard. I'm just a big fan of mechanical keyboards in general. I just love the sort of clicky sound of mechanical keyboards. Um, but, 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 see. And by the way, in terms of keyboards, um, if you're looking to start coding and you're wondering which keyboard you should get, I don't really think it matters. I know many people make videos about like, oh, best keyboards for programming, but like, I mean, they're just keyboards, right? It's just like, choose the keyboard that you want. <laughs> it's not uh, much more complicated than that. Think about whether you want a mechanical keyboard or a non-mechanical keyboard and sort of go from there. Then if you get a mechanical keyboard, the next question you wanna ask is what type of switches you wanna get. Uh, but essentially these ones give this like really nice clicky sound, which is what I actually prefer. It's one of the reasons why I switched out of my previous one because I didn't like this sound as much. I know that's like a nerdy thing to care about, but I mean, I like my typing to sound nice. Yes. Yes, amazing. Previously, I really wanted this smaller one because I thought I didn't really need these top buttons right here. But recently, I've sort of started feeling like I might want to have them as well. And this one also has, I think this is for like volume maybe, or I don't even know what you can use this for. Sounds like a pretty nice keyboard. Not much else to say about that. Uh, it's all about just having one that you like the look of. So the colors and the way the buttons look, you like the sound of, and that is the size that you want. There's like a couple of different sizes uh, of keyboard. Basically that just means what kinds of buttons are available on the actual keyboard. So just ever one you like really. It's not that much more complicated than that. Thank you Keychron. Back to the rest of the video. Okay, next we'll move on to the software. So mainly when I'm coding, most of the time I use VS Code. It's one of the most popular coding editors out there and it just has a lot of extensions and a lot of things that make it really easy for you to code. And to be fair, it's just the first one that I picked because it was so popular. I haven't like tried and compared all of them to see which one's the best. This is just the one that I use. And I like a lot of the color themes that you can use with VS Code. On my previous video about Python automation, a lot of people asked me which VS Code extension I'm using to get this cool blue color. And the theme is called Tomorrow Night Blue. The reason I like this cool cool blue effects because it makes me look like a hacker when I'm coding and I just like blue as a color. So for most of my coding I use VS Code but there's a couple of languages that have better IDs that are better suited to those languages. For example, recently I've been dabbling in getting into mobile development, specifically iOS development using Swift. And for pretty much all iOS development, the IDE that you should use is Xcode, which is Apple's own developer environment. I'm gonna be making a separate video on how I'm learning mobile development, but essentially the course that I'm doing is this one. It's called like the complete iOS development bootcamp or something like that on Udemy. There's gonna be an affiliate link down below if you want to check it out but there's going to be more videos on mobile development very soon and the other thing i am doing currently is going through this algorithms textbook by robert setwick which is written in java so for that reason and for that reason only i have started using java and for java it turns out that this IDE called intellij is the one that pretty much every java developer uses or at least there's a couple of different ones that are more built for java so whenever i'm doing java stuff i use that id instead of vs code but yeah once i'm done with that textbook i'm probably never going to be writing java again so that application is definitely going to be deleted in terms of other software for coding i don't really use tab much i just use apple notes for note down any project ideas i have and make it a little bit of a plan for it but most of the coding project i'm doing for myself as of now are like relatively simple where i don't need a specific workflow for like plan the projects or anything like that mostly it's just like simple scripts that i'm doing for myself so just a script that i did to automate my downloads for the management using python which i made a video about right here which you should absolutely watch next